Hello, uh, today I'm going to give you the lecture on uh, pelvic congestion syndrome uh, for the female. Okay, pelvic congestion syndrome is a PCS. Pelvic congestion syndrome is due to the congestion of the um, congestion of the blood vessels, and the blood vessels congestion uh, is a um, big challenge right now, especially the venous system. Okay, one second. Okay, especially the venous system, they get congested. And when the blood vessels is congested, means what? Especially the venous system, it pressure goes up. Why its pressure goes up? Because it shows its insufficiency to make a flow from higher pressure to lower pressure. And there is a backup during the flow forwards. There is a uh, back flow or backward flow or backup or congestion means too much traffic to move forward. Then why all those things happen? Couple of problems you have to understand that <clears throat> understand this that if this is a vein and it forms the IVC and this vein has I hope you are understanding that I am going to draw the IVC. So what happened the IVC? Okay, I am drawing the IVC with this venous drainage. Okay, so this is Okay, I hope you are understanding the organs and this is the IVC and it enters into the right atrium. Okay, so this is IVC is formed by the anastomosis of the Two common iliac veins, and these are to the internal iliac vein, and this is external iliac vein. So, internal iliac vein or hypogastric vein that is in part has a major role 
to drain the blood from the pelvic organ especially the fallopian tube uterus vagina okay but the ovaries it has a different terms and condition the right ovarian venous blood returns directly into the IVC and on the left side it goes first into the left renal vein okay so this is IVC is started and is going up by the side of the right side of the body bra and this is left renal vein and this is right renal vein and uh, this is IVC and these are the hepatic veins and this is IVC and this is right right atrium okay so this is the situation you have to understand that blood the venous blood is flowing from higher pressure to lower pressure because the venous pressure in the right atrium is 0 to 5 or 7 millimeter of mercury higher pressure here around 20 millimeter of mercury in the lower extremity so blood is moving from higher pressure to the lower pressure with the muscle movement muscle movement muscle com compression <sighs> breathe in and out posture change we change our posture and competency of the venous valve okay so four things we need to consider here for the venous return from the pelvic organs what are those number one exercise number two respiration posture change and competent venous valve okay exercise we do exercise and the venous return is enhanced from the lower extremity or periphery towards the center that can enhance the blood flow from the pelvic organ respiration yes the hemodynamic changes and the lower extremity venous flow can be enhanced by breath out it could be enhanced and any blood flow returning below the diaphragm is enhanced by the exhale during the exhale and is shut down during taking the breath in and posture change somebody is all the time is standing working is standing so then what gonna happen the gravity pulls the blood down and it interferes the blood moves from the higher pressure to upwards okay and we need to do go for supine position sitting position standing position so there are so many different types of position that can change the blood flow and the competent venous valve the venous valve opens the competent venous valves opens only from higher pressure to lower pressure directions and if it is incompetent means it opens it does not close together nicely there will be insufficiency 
that means blood will move forward but because of the bulb is still open it will come back again so as a result what happened the lower extremity all veins will develop high venous pressure will develop high venous pressure and vein will be congested pelvic veins will be congested and when the veins are congested then what happened it starts dilated 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 and when it is dilated so then understand that this is a vein that has a lower pressure inside this is the vein and when it is congested dilated it pressure goes up inside too much and it starts having tortuosity okay it would be dilated like that so when it is dilated like that then it will be so heavy and it causes pressure pain that's why when a girl has a mid cycle of menstruation during that time because of the hormonal influence pelvic gets organs get congested and again the venous dilatations create more congestion and feeling pain and a lot of girls young girls and middle-aged girls they develop more pelvic congestion during the menstruation and the mid cycle of the menstruations okay estrogen and progesterone they causes vasodilatations okay they can have influence over the veins and artery but vein is more uh, quickly responded and if these veins are congested and most of the time internal iliac vein so can we see the internal iliac vein in uh, GYN protocol oh yes while you will be scanning the adnexal area we will see it and one of the major branch of the internal iliac vein and also internal iliac artery is the uterine artery and uterine vein and those are by the side at the level of cervix it goes inside under the perimetrium and by the side of the ethmus you will see the tortuous dilated blood vessels especially for the multi-para women and also during the pregnancy time and that gets so dilated and congested it could be hanging down like a varicose vein and that causes pressure pain okay so this is sonographically understandable and visible and diagnosable so I will draw the diagram and one more thing I'm just giving idea look at here the IVC is taking blood up in the meantime they receive the blood from the left renal vein which is more longer and that then the right renal vein and while it goes through the liver it fulfills its commitment what is the commitment hey IBC says hey liver don't worry I will receive your blood through the hepatic veins and there are three hepatic veins that drains blood into the IVC and the IVC dumping blood into the right atrium and the right atrial pressure is lower than the IVC but in case of congestive heart failure 
right atrial failure. That means what? The right atrium is already filled in. The pressure inside the right atrium is greater than the IVC pressure. So then what is going to happen? The right atrium will say, hey IVC, take your blood back. I cannot take it because I am already filled in. I have no space. And the IVC will say, hey, I'm sorry, hepatic veins, take your blood back. And the IVC has no valve. That's why easily blood can move from higher pressure to lower pressure in any directions. So blood will back. So hepatic veins will be dilated. And the renal veins will be dilated, congested. And the pelvic veins will be dilated and congested. Okay, so you will see by multiple causes the pelvic veins can be dilated, can be dilated. And congested. If there is a partial obstruction of the IVC due to DVT or metastasis or compression of the organomegaly in the pelvic and abdominal cavity, it can compress the IVC. And when the mom, pregnant mom especially, the slave supine position or by the right side it easily compress the IVC as a result the blood return through the IVC can be interfered that's why we advise for the pregnant mom or normally that it is better to lean on the left side left DQ position okay and um, or just left sided so you will see the vein IVC will be free and easily blood can move out okay so this is these are the causes of pelvic venous congestion pelvic venous congestion means the veins in the pelvic spaces those veins are attached with the organs that veins are attached with the adnexa the pelvic walls lot of veins are there with a lot of organs and when the pressure goes up those veins get dilated how can i prove that it is a dilated veins so you will be scanning the pelvic organs in the GYN protocol. In GYN protocol, understand when we see the adnexa, okay, this is adnexa. Then what we see? We see the blood vessels, And we see lot of muscles. So this is the blood vessels normally. Okay. So these are the hypogastric vessels. And these are the internal iliac artery and the vein. So this is vein. Example, so this is vein. And if this vein is dilated and tortuous and very coarse form, then how does it look like? You will see. Like that. 
What does it mean? It's tortuous. What could be the most common cause of tortuosity? Either it could be congenital or due to the increased venous pressure. The way we develop the varicose vein in the lower extremity, that is the varicose vein in the pelvic space. Do I need to clip the color? Oh yeah! So when we clip the color, what are you going to see? We'll see this is colorful. Maybe it is a blue and the artery will be red. So in that way we can see the hypogastric blood vessels are dilated. Okay? And if it is an artery, then you will see uh -huh. it will be red color. Okay, so that's the way we can figure it out. So this is one. And another way we can see, let me draw it here. When we see the uh, uterus, okay? When we see the uterus, so in especially in sagittal view or transverse view, okay, draw the transverse view. That would be better. Transverse view of the body, and you might see the tortuosity of the uterine vessels, and those are mostly. You will see on the color, you will see it is filled up with the color. So this is the vein is dilated and even though some women with a the multiparity, their uterine artery is also dilated and tortuous. Okay, so this is, you can see that um, in transverse view, so this is transverse view, transverse uterine body and below the body that it must, you can see this. So these are tortuous blood vessels. Now, in sagittal view, in sagittal view, this is says sagittal uterus, Sagittal uterus in trans abdominal ultrasonography or in trans vaginal ultrasonography. So, this is bladder, this is uterus, and this is rectum. Okay, lot of times you will see if the blood vessels are dilated, you will see this is blood vessels. Okay, 
So this is the very prominent anechoic to hypoechoic area you will see under the perivatrium. Then click the color you will see it is colorful and you will might see some very prominent arcuate artery is seen here. Okay, so this is another way you can figure it out the blood vessels are dilated. When you see the ovary, let me draw the ovary in the adnexal area also look for the dilated blood vessels because the normally this is a SAS ovary normally we got the ovary like this Then what we do? We click the color. When we click the color, we need to see how is the blood flow. And if you see the blood flow is too much, then you will be surprised that how it is possible the blood flow is too much then vein and artery and you will see some blood vessels are dilated by the side of the ovary so in that way we can conclude that Without any common pathology, there is a, uh, this is ovary, this is blood vessels, so these are dilated blood vessels. So without any pathology, there is a dilatation of the blood vessels. And it indicates the venous, especially the venous congestion. And we need to figure it out that why there is a venous congestion. So it could be most of the time it, it has a primary cause is venous valve absent congenitally. Secondary cause is venous valve insufficient due to defect, due to disease. And third cause you can see there is a pelvic uh, pathology mass or abdominal mass that compress the IBC. As a result there is a backup, blood cannot move through the IBC towards the heart. And the, if there is a heart, right heart failure, we call it congestive heart failure. So along with all other venous drainage, the pelvic venous drainage,